Hi everyone, welcome back to another episode of the Breast Cancer Physio. I'm your host Jen McKenzie, lymphedema physiotherapist and ESSA accredited exercise physiologist. I wasn't quite sure what topic I was going to cover when I first started to think about making this video, but we've just finished the last lecture of our Breast Cancer Thrivership series on the Sunshine Coast in Queensland, Australia. And that particular lecture was on hormone blocking medication. And I know quite a number of people that follow my channel have been asking me about information around managing side effects of hormone blocking medication for a while. And it is certainly a massive topic of conversation in my clinic every day. So I wanted to talk in summary about that lecture. And the first thing I want to do is profoundly thank my presenter, Brenton Seidel, who is a medical oncologist from Sunshine Coast Haematology Oncology Clinic in Budrum on the Sunshine Coast, Queensland, Australia. He absolutely hit it out of the park yesterday when he presented hormone blocking medication. We had 50 people RSVP to this event and about 40 were able to attend and it was just so well received from the aspect that everyone in the audience really felt that Brenton presented not only how these medications work but also really thoroughly dove into the side effects and how each of these side effects could potentially be either dampened or managed. And I think the frustrating thing with hormone blocking medication is that there is a lot of research to really strongly advocate the use of this medication, but for some women dealing with the side effects of this medication it almost renders them to the point where quality of life is just not worth it anymore so they ultimately end up ceasing the medication early which is always a bit of a shame because I think even for those people that really can't continue to take the medication they get that feeling that they're um, not pulling on one of the levers that they can potentially pull to reduce their risk of recurrence and improve their survival chances so it's a very, very big topic and this is the first of, I hope, many videos that I'm going to be doing on hormone blocking medication. So first in this video, I want to talk about the Breast Cancer Thrivership Program for those who aren't aware of it. Um, I also want to dive into, though, just one aspect of uh, side effects of hormone blocking medication, which is bone mineral density, because that's certainly a topic I can cover by myself to a large degree. Some of the other topics that are side effects of hormone blocking medication, I'm definitely going to be getting in guest presenters to talk on more of those things. We've had a few other videos done where I've brought in guest presenters that have covered some of these topics, so I'll leave some links to those videos throughout this video. So first and foremost, let's talk about the Breast Cancer Thrivership Program. So I'll leave a link um, to the website for the Breast Cancer Thrivership Program below here. This was essentially a program that the breast cancer surgeon, Dr. Lisa Crichton and I spearheaded in 2020. It was a educational series of lectures that were designed to be delivered to breast cancer pa patients and survivors and their partners and carers. Unfortunately, we got three lectures into the series and then COVID hit and we had to stop doing the lectures. So we've finally got through a full series of the Thrivership Program, uh, yesterday being the last lecture of the series. So this program essentially covers some of the really big topics that sometimes don't get enough attention when you're going through active treatment. So by active treatment, I mean surgery, chemotherapy, radiation. Um, once you've uh, completed those treatments, which are usually your primary treatments for breast cancer, um, we're designing this program really to fill in all of the other gaps uh, to educate people around all the other side effects of breast cancer treatment. So some of the topics that we have already covered in the Thrivership program have been exercise, surgery, nutrition, lymphedema, effects of radiation, sexual health, emotional health, hormone blocking therapy, and we've also got plans to put in a lecture about breast reconstruction. I'd really like to expand the program to cover a lot more topics, but at this stage, those are the ones we've covered. So far, the program has been very well received by the participants on the Sunshine Coast, and it would be lovely um, to think that one day this might be a global program by which people can 
log in and uh, watch these videos um, that have been pre-recorded. So one of the side effects of hormone blocking medication can be loss of bone mineral density or bone stock. Now please keep in mind that this doesn't necessarily apply to everybody. So as an example, if you're taking tamoxifen, tamoxifen is actually associated with strengthening bone stock. In saying that though, if you are postmenopausal already and you happen to be taking tamoxifen, then you may already have some pre-existing loss of bone mineral density. So whatever your circumstances, just make sure that you check your bone mineral density through your medical team. So if you've gone through breast cancer treatment at some point, it's definitely worth your while getting a bone mineral density test performed because this is going to evaluate where your bone stock is at. Now you might not have poor bone stock immediately as you pop out the other side of breast cancer treatment, but over the course of the following years, because of the effect of treatment and because of the effect of being postmenopausal or going into menopause, this may start to affect your bone stock. So even if your bones are good now, it's not a bad idea to get a baseline bone mineral density score done so that you can see where you're at at the end of treatment. Even a GP can organise a bone mineral density test. So if your medical team that treated you for breast cancer didn't get to covering a bone mineral density test during active treatment, it's absolutely worthwhile to go and have a chat with your GP about this topic. Depending on each individual's circumstances as well, sometimes people have a higher propensity for bone mineral loss. As an example, people who are taking aromatase inhibitors as hormone blocking medication compared to those on tamoxifen, and then those women who've had chemotherapy compared to those who haven't are at higher um, risk of osteoporosis. And then on top of that, people who are postmenopausal versus perimenopausal or premenopausal are at higher risk of bone mineral density loss. So again, please check with your medical team as to the uh, urgency, so to speak, as to whether you've needed a bone mineral density test. So if you haven't had one done yet, don't worry too much because it just might not have been right at the top of the priority list when you were going through active treatment, particularly if your medical team was of the opinion that it wasn't a really urgent test to go and do. So I'll just put a quick note in here to say that there's normal bone stock, then there's osteopenia, which is a little bit worse bone stock levels, and then there's osteoporosis. And we'll just put a graph up here now to show what your typical traffic light graph looks like when you have a bone mineral density test done. So in the green zone, that's showing normal bone stock. The yellow zone is osteopenia, which is a little bit less bone stock. And then the red zone is osteoporosis. And as you can see, there is quite a range. So even though you might be osteopenic, you might be just over the border into the yellow. So it's not, you know, nearly osteoporosis. It might be just into osteoporosis. The best piece of news I can give you guys is the fact that bone stock is something that is actually changeable and it's changeable through a number of things. The first thing we're going to talk about is medications but I'm not going to go into a great deal of detail about this because I'm not a medical professional, I'm only an allied health professional. So if you've got any queries as to what medications are available to improve your bone stock, that is definitely a conversation to have with either your GP or your treating medical team for breast cancer. But there's certainly evidence to show that these medications can improve your bone stock. I'll just put a little note in here too to say that because bones are such a strong structure, they're not going to change really quickly. So when we measure bone stock, it may not be measured for one to two years, depending on your circumstances. So even if you started to do things towards improving your bone stock, your medical team or your GP may not get request a follow-up bone mineral density test for one to two years, but that's considered normal. You're not going to see massive shifts in bone really quickly just because it's such a strong structure it's going to take the body time to adapt. The second thing you can do to improve your bone mineral density is through diet. Now diet's not only what you eat per se in your normal um, food intake, but it's also supplements. So caltrate and vitamin D may be something that is prescribed to you. Again, this is individual circumstances. So if you've already got fantastic calcium and vitamin D levels, your doctor may not have prescribed you those supplements. But again, this is where a blood test can be worth being performed to assess your vitamin D and your calcium levels. But essentially, in Australia, caltrate and vitamin D are commonly used to help support um, improvement in bone stock. 
The other thing that is often advocated is dietary calcium. Again, individual circumstances because some people don't tolerate dairy in their diet. So if you're lactose intolerant, then dairy in your diet may not be suitable to bump up your bone stock in that manner. So this again comes back to where medications and supplements might be two possible options for your improved your bone mineral density. Now the third thing you can do is exercise and it's a particular type of exercise that we're talking about here. It's actually two types of exercise but one sort of flows into the other. We're talking about weight bearing exercise and we're also talking about resistance exercise. Resistance exercise is also known as lifting weights and it's a topic that I'm really passionate about and I've spoken about it in a couple of other videos I've already done. So when we talk about weight bearing exercise, this is anything like walking or running and this is a really good way to start working on your bone stock. Even if you don't have low bone mineral density but you've had chemotherapy or you're on an aromatase inhibitor, this is a fantastic way you can start to make sure your bones are staying healthy. So walking or running, just make sure you're not at a falls risk if you're going to start running before you do. Um, and then of course resistance training being lifting weights. So if you are looking to do gold standard exercise for improving your bone mineral density, it's going to be resistance training. A lot of people get a little bit nervous around the idea of lifting weights, but if you work with a physiotherapist or an exercise physiologist, particularly one that's had experience with looking after patients who've gone through breast cancer or cancer in general, you're going to be eased into this program. So it's not going to be here, catch a 50 kilo barbell on day one. Um, far from it, you're going to start quite low and you're going to build yourself up really slowly. So if you are curious about doing this style of exercise because you're really enthusiastic about not getting osteoporosis or not getting osteopenia, um, and if you want to rely less on medications because there's a lot of breast cancer patients who even though they are made aware that there's certain medications out there on the market that could help them with things like bone stock. Sometimes the last thing breast cancer patients or breast cancer survivors feel like doing is taking more medication and I can appreciate that. And look, it's each to their own, you know, you can have all the options in the world but sometimes you're just not interested in certain ones because it might go against your grain or you might not be motivated to do it at a particular time. In saying all that, exercise by itself is a very, very good thing to do for bone mineral density. I think exercise combined with dietary calcium and then your supplements and your medications are going to be, you know, hitting it from all possible angles. So there is a lot of stuff you can do to improve your bone mineral density. So like I said, if you're going into an exercise program to start resistance training, I would highly recommend you have it done in a guided manner that's tailored to you. Group exercise classes are still fantastic, but if you're going into a group setting, I'd highly recommend you speak one-on-one -on -one to whoever's leading that class and just let them know your past medical history, what you're trying to achieve, and any things that you know might be impacting how, what you can do in that class, like lymphedema prevention as an example, or lymphedema management if you already have that. Thank you very much for watching this video guys, I hope you've gained some really good information. Like I said before, go and check out the Thrivership program, it's something that I'd like to start sharing with all of you a lot more frequently, but I'd also like to really start diving into how we can better manage the side effects of hormone blocking medication, particularly things like joint pain, bone pain, hot flushes, sexual dysfunction, and sleep in particular. I really, really am quite motivated to do a few lectures on things like how to get a better night's sleep um, and sleep hygiene because I believe that if your sleep is not really sorted, then it impacts everything. You know, I advocate exercise so often in these videos, but if you've got really disrupted or sorry, if you've got really disrupted sleep or you are super sleep deprived because of things like um, insomnia or night sweats or hot flushes, then exercise even goes out the door and mentally you can go out the door as well. So we really, really need to start talking a lot more about how to get a good night's sleep on this channel as well. So stay tuned for that. I hope you're having a fantastic week wherever you are, guys. Thank you to everyone who came to the hormone blocking medication lecture yesterday. 
And thank you once again to Dr. Brenton Seidel, our medical oncologist from Sunshine Coast Haematology Oncology Clinic, because he really did an absolutely brilliant job in presenting this topic yesterday. I'm Jen McKenzie, the breast cancer physio, and I will see you next time.